Brooms are the Rodney Dangerfield of tools. They don't get respect at all. My granddaddy often said that a Hoover put him in business, and a Hoover almost put us out, Herbert and the vacuum cleaner. Because my granddaddy was a Democrat, and Herbert Hoover was a Republican, and my granddaddy blamed him for starting the Depression, which led him to having to make brooms. Well, that's a good thing, because look where we are today. And then he joked that a Hoover almost put him out, a Hoover vacuum cleaner. And we have to be good to stay in business because we sell on quality, we don't sell on quantity. But one reason that we're still in business is because many of the brooms that are made in factories are just not very good, they don't hold up. They're not 100% broom corn. The person making them has no pride in it, has no love for it, it's not a family tradition. So therefore they don't feel like they have to be that good. But most anything that's handmade after 80 years in a family is gonna be good. I'm Richard N. Henson. I'm the third generation R. N. Henson to manage Henson Broom Shop and General Store. We're located in the village of Simsonia, Kentucky in the heart of the Jackson Purchase. We've been making brooms for 80 years in my family. My first founder of this business was my grandfather, Raleigh Newton Henson. My father, Raleigh Nelson Henson, is the second broom maker of our family, and now it's my turn to manage it. Well, brooms have been around since historic times. In fact, as you can read about them in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, it said he swept them away with the broom of destruction. Uh, brooms have always been around because dirt and uncleanliness has always been around, so you had to have something. The broom that we started with in 1930 has actually been around since the 1860s. So it's not a, quote, modern broom. There's really nothing about a modern work broom. They're all pretty old style. Now, when you get into the artistic work and every broom maker has their own creativity, then there's always going to be differences. I have here a broom we call the Pretty Parlor Broom. You'll notice that it's black broom corn on a walnut stained handle, sewn and bound with leather. Martha Stewart bought one of these brooms. Well, the first big break was, of course, in the early 1900s, right after PBS did a documentary on us. One of the set designers for Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman happened to see that on TV in California. And they contacted us, and one thing led to another, and I may have wound up making 88 different brooms for the set of Dr. Quinn. Well, Miss Seymour loved one particular style so much that she carried one home with her, and she mailed me a letter and some autographed pictures of her, and then later some of the other actors and actresses sent us autographed pictures of them, which we have on display here in the store. Well, then right after that, notoriety started spreading, and we were starting getting known and more attention. RFD did a uh, segment on us uh, and featured it nationwide. Well, then right after that, a uh, ballet theater in Leeds, England, the Northern Ballet Theater, heard about us getting ready to produce a ballet called Angels in the Architecture, which is a ballet set to Appalachian music and telling the story of the Shakers before they migrated from England to the United States. So we produced 16 Shaker brooms. Here's one of our latest famous pieces, a colon colonial hearth broom that we made for the nationwide tour, Broadway play, Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Well, we go everywhere. We've had visitors here in the store the other day from Moose Jaw, Canada. Uh, we've had them from Carnival, India. Uh, we've had people from Benin, West Africa. A lot of people love coming here. Martha Stewart, we made brooms for Martha Stewart. We have made we, a lot of people hear about this place, word of mouth, that's our best advertising, and they want a trip back in time. They want something old, they want something nostalgic and historic, and they just love seeing the place. Well, people come in here, you know, and, and, and they'll want to know if I have brooms for their wives. I said, no, but I got some good brooms that only a man can use. How many do you want? 
it takes them a while to catch that. But one of the funniest things that's happened around here is I love to wear my Amish hat when I'm mowing. And two years ago, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon, July, and it was hot, about closing time, and I decided, well, it takes three hours to mow this place. I need to get started. So I put my Amish hat on, and I got on the mower, and sure enough, you know what happened. The car pulls up from Evansville, Indiana, and it's got two men and two women in it. So I get out, and I come off the mower, and I come up the porch, and a woman gets out of the car first and meets me on the front porch, and she stopped, and she hesitated, and she looked at me with that Amish hat, and she said, are you Amish? I said, no, ma'am, we're Canaanites. We're allowed to have more than one husband. I'm number four, and it's my turn to mow today. Now, I mean, that woman froze, <laughs> and those men started laughing. Well, I tell that story quite a bit, and I always get a laugh with it. But we've won many awards. We've been featured in books and magazines and newspapers and television appearances all over the country. You don't get that if you're not doing something right. But I would not have got there if I'd have sat back and just wait for it to happen. I did not wait for, quote, success to come to me. I went out and found success and made it happen by working hard.